During SM1 reaction, a good leaving group dissociates from a substrate, thereby forming a carbocation. This carbocation is then attacked by a weak nucleophile. In many instances, the weak nucleophile will be neutral, so that after it adds to the carbocation, it will then acquire a formal positive charge. In these instances, the nucleophile will then lose a proton to yield a neutral product. SN1 stands for first order nucleophilic substitution. Loss of the leaving group is the rate determining step of this reaction. During that step, only one species is mechanistically involved, and that is the substrate. Therefore, the rate depends only on the concentration of the substrate, making this a first order process. While many weak nucleophiles are neutral, some may be negatively charged. If that is the case, then the final mechanistic step, the loss of proton, would not be necessary. In this specific example, a tosylate is the good leaving group that dissociates from the substrate to form a benzylic carbocation. This carbocation is not only secondary, but it is also resonance stabilized. Methanol serves as a weak nucleophile, which attacks the benzylic carbocation, yielding an oxonium ion, or positively charged oxygen. Loss of a proton from this intermediate yields the product, which is an ether. In the preceding example, the reactant contained a stereocenter. However, that stereocenter's configuration was unspecified. In this instance, the configuration is specified. However, when the leaving group dissociates, a trigonal planar or flat carbocation results. The nucleophile can then attack that carbocation from either side, leading to a mixture of oxonium ion intermediates which have either configuration at this center. The squiggly line denotes either stereochemical configuration. Loss of a proton from the oxonium ion yields a racemic mixture of products having both possible configurations at the new stereocenter. Since the SN1 reaction has a carbocation intermediate, carbocation rearrangement is a possibility. In the following example, chloride dissociates from our substrate, yielding a secondary carbocation. Notice that the adjacent center is a tertiary center and would make a better carbocation. As a result, a 1,2 hydride shift occurs in which the hydrogen moves with its bonding pair of electrons to the adjacent center and this results in a tertiary carbocation intermediate, which is more stable than the secondary carbocation. The weak nucleophile, water, then attacks this center, yielding an oxonium ion, and the oxonium ion sheds a proton, yielding our final product, which is an alcohol in this case. In summary, efficient SM1 reaction requires a stable carbocation intermediate. Consequently, it does not occur with primary substrates unless they are resonance stabilized, meaning allylic or benzylic substrates. A weak nucleophile is also a key feature of this reaction, and common weak nucleophiles include water, alcohols, or fluoride. Stereochemistry will be randomized at the reactive site because the carbocation intermediate has trigonal planar geometry and the nucleophile can add to either side of that carbocation. Carbocation rearrangement is also a possibility. This description of the SM1 reaction was an excerpt from Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, 
in paperback from Amazon or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.